I purchased this faulty original DMG Game Boy on eBay for £28. There's something about the original Game Boys and this just looks incredible. We are however missing the writing where the A and B is and the starter select is very very faded. The overall condition of the Game Boy is really really nice. We still have the serial stick on the back and it even came with the battery case which is a rarity. The listing on eBay states it's an auction for a Game Boy. It comes sold as faulty for spares or repair as it won't power on when tested. Even the screen lens itself actually looks pretty decent. We have a few scratches but I think as well you can see a tiny bit of screen burn here. Just a tiny tiny bit. We'll have a look at that more in a second. I'm just going to quickly see what the condition is like underneath the hood. If I'm being 100% honest with you the Game Boys that I've picked up off of eBay that are faulty and it says no power is usually because you've got some sort of battery corrosion on the springs. Now these springs in my opinion look very healthy. Like ridiculously healthy. They don't even look like they're incorrectly. Are these new? That's not in, look, it's just come straight out and it's, it looks brand spanking new. Let's check this one. Exactly the same, like they both just slide out. So is it possible that these weren't connected properly with the Game Boy? If you look really closely, you might be able to see some green corrosion down there, but nothing that would stop this from working. So I'll just put these back in quickly and put that back on. Now we are gonna test this and see if it powers on. However, I put a community post on my channel basically saying that I've picked up this faulty DMG off of eBay. And would you like to see me mod it completely with an IPS screen, some other little bits, or keep it original? I thought the poll was gonna be majority keep it original, but it turns Turns out a whopping 72% of people said it would be pretty cool if I modded it. The reason why I'm quite happy with that is because I already have an original Game Boy DMG with all of the writing. This is the original case. It's a little bit dirty, but it is in full working order. So I'm happy that people turned around and said, actually, Joey, do you know what? Mod this one. And also here's the back of it if anyone's interested. It's in pretty good condition. Now, before I actually test this to see exactly what's going on with it, let's run through a list of things that I've actually purchased. All of the stuff that I have bought was purchased from Retro6. I'll leave a link to their website in the description down below. It was based off a lot of referrals. And when I looked on Retro6's website compared to AliExpress and stuff, the prices weren't massively different. And by the time you go to AliExpress and add up all the shipping costs, the taxes, etc., I think it actually worked out a little bit cheaper to go to Retro6. So first off, you're thinking, wait, what's going on? This color clash. However, I think they ship the clean juice USB-C battery and charging board in a shell because they're not allowed to send the battery on its own in a box, I think. So I have managed to get a free case with a purple cover. Okay, brings me back to this. This is a clean juice GB. It just means that you can plug in USB-C and charge a battery to play on your Game Boy instead of using AA batteries and using up loads of them. This is a replacement board for the IPS screen. I can't remember if it's the back board or the front board for the DMG, but I think it's just a lot newer to support the IPS screen. We have the IPS screen itself with the bracket. We then got a brand new power board. This is called Clean Power, which does exactly what it says on the, on the tin. It makes the power cleaner. This is the screen lens. We've gone for a white screen lens. It's glass, so it's good quality. And then we've gone for the all white shell. Had to buy this separately because it's for the clean juice. This comes with one, but because we're gonna be modding that, we uh, we needed this. And I've gone for some white membranes as well. The total cost, including postage, as you can see on the screen, was 135 pounds and 40p. Let's take a look at this and see why it's not working. First off, we'll take the battery cover off and just put in some AA batteries. Batteries in, the power on. I get a light. And I get a screen, I get both, and I get a speaker. Hmm. Can you see that little bit of a uh, burn on the screen just to the right there, see that? It doesn't really take away how gorgeous this Game Boy is. Maybe I got lucky. No, I mean, it's powering on without fail every single time. Maybe it doesn't read a game cartridge. Let's take Ye old Faithful Pokemon Blue. I've never completed this game, and after this mod, I'm gonna see if I can. Okay, does it read games? Here we go. It does, look. It reads games and everything. I'm very confused right now. I played about 10 minutes or so worth of Pokemon Blue, and it didn't shut off once, so I think we're just gonna go ahead with the mod. What did you do to fix it, Joey? I put batteries in it. You win some, you lose some. Now, for the exciting part, Let's get on with the mod. I guess let's start by taking out all of the screws that we have. These are called tri-wing screws. Most Nintendo consoles have tri-wing screws. I don't actually think I need these in the mod for the clean juice, you know, because looking at the actual board itself, you only need these two pins up here to make the connection. I don't think I need that one as well. When it sits in, it touches these two pins, which are on the board itself. I'm gonna be keeping everything, by the way, with this Game Boy, like the whole, oh, screen laser just fell off. The shell, the screen, the lock, just in case I need parts for anything going forward, so just if we take that down, we then remove the rimming cable here just slowly by 
There we go, releasing it. Oh, so it's the front board. So it's the front board. This is the one that I was talking about that gets replaced. See here, we have the two different ones. I'm guessing as well we need to take the speaker from this and put it onto this board. Now we take out these two Phillips screws. We have one here and one here. We also need to remove this board as well. We got another two Phillips screws. And if we just take this out, I guess, just do we lift it? Yep, yeah, nice and easy. This is the old power board and we're gonna be replacing it with this one. This is the cleaner one that we were looking at earlier. So we're gonna go under the scope and just desolder everything here. So we're just gonna be using the soldering iron to wick away what solder we can. There we go. Just to make it easier, look at that. Beautiful, I should. Now if I grab the wire behind, I should be able to pull it through after I've heated it up. There we go, it's off. Just putting the new board on now, we're gonna add a tiny bit of flux. Probably don't need to, but just help with the float solder. That'll do. Just quick clean. We're gonna take our new shell out of the pristine packaging. Now just to put the four Phillips screws that we took out before. You have to be really careful using new screws that you don't thread the part that you screw into. Do it slowly and don't over tighten it. For you to run remember the power switch and there we go all nice and solid so far just had to move the wires out of this post where the screw goes because i was worried that it might get in the way but we look good now we need to remove this speaker and transfer it over to the new board desolder these little speakers well speaker wires now so just pull this one out and this one as well there we go we are going to clean said speaker with some ipa and some cotton buds because it is filthy better let me just solder this one first Here we go, took a while. I didn't use flux this time. And now this one. There we go. Tiny bit of flux, because why not? Better. Now we've got the really sweaty bit, so I'm gonna put the microfiber cloth underneath, just in case, but I think it's time to put the screen in. I was just testing out the bracket as well, and the bracket is perfect. You literally place it in on these little holes. It sits in, and you can't go wrong. You then place a the screen in, and it centers it perfectly. So now that that is in the bracket, there we go, we take the screen. I'm actually just gonna put a bit of caps on tape down, just to secure this, to stop it from wriggling, and then put that there like that. There we go, ever so gently. I'm not pushing down hard on the screen. And if we also do another one on the other side, just to make sure it doesn't wriggle. Now this is the sketchy bit, we're taking the peel off. The bracket is now perfectly down. Now we get to put all of the buttons in. I should have done that before really, shouldn't I? And that should all fit perfect as it does. Now I've put the big ribbon cable in here already and bent it up slightly. So if we now place the speaker in and this board, again, slowly but surely. There we go, nice. Now we just need to put our screws in. Now remember that captain tape I put on to center the ribbon, now look. It's now nowhere near where the board should go. So what I need to do is take this apart again and then maybe just move it over slightly so it's in line with that because I'm not gonna be able to get that ribbon cable in, not in an angle like that. I've just straightened it out and as you can see, it looks a lot better now, more in line. I believe I can go ahead and attach this big ribbon cable here to the back of the board here. Now this might be very awkward, so I'm just gonna do this off camera. I've just put the ribbon cable and uh, yeah, I forgot the power button, so nice. Saying that, we've got the black power button in and it matches all the other stuff, so the wheel, etc. So I actually think I prefer the black button over the white one, to be honest. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Oh wow, the set comes with a, a little plug as well to put over here. That's awesome, just to cover it up. Look at that. Now let's secure it all in place. I've also just managed to install the clean juice, the, the battery pack, and would you look at it, the USB-C, it fits perfectly. Absolutely fantastic. Everything on the shell fits perfectly, like really, really snug. There was only one screw that I managed to thread and it hasn't threaded completely to the point where it doesn't screw. It's just a little bit lighter than say the others. But other than that, I mean, you, you, you can't even tell. It all looks absolutely fantastic. You ready for the front? In three, two, one. Would you look at that? How stunning is this? I've just given it another good clean because it had a little bit of dirt on the glass lens. This Game Boy is absolutely beautiful. And are you ready? Check the quality of the screen. Here we go. Oh my God, it's perfect. It's centered perfectly with that bracket and it is absolutely gorgeous. If I hold down the contrast wheel on the left, we've got the brightness, we've got the battery display, so this is for the USB-C. It'll display how much battery is left. If I go to put that on, you'll see in the top left up here, we've now got a battery image, color adjust, and then a factory reset. And then if I hold it down again, it disappears. There we go. If I go ahead and tap the contrast wheel, it goes through the different various palettes that we have. 
and as you can see like I said it is just absolutely gorgeous. I think it goes up to something like 36, 35, 36 and then back to one. Yeah there we go and number one I think is best currently. Now how does it look with a natural game? So here we go Pokemon Blue fits nice and snug. Turn it on. Look at it. I've basically turned the DMG into a Game Boy Color. Just so you guys can see what it actually looks like in Palette Town. If I cycle through, these are the various different color palettes. The color palettes in Palette Town, eh? Let me know in the comment section down below what you give this Game Boy out of 10 for looks. It looks absolutely fantastic. In my opinion, only thing I've just noticed is that the LED light is just off-centered a tad. You see that? But we can't really help that because that's the screen lens and that screen lens is fitting perfectly. I know this is a completely different video to what you're used to. I, I bought it with no power with the intent of fixing it and then modding it, but it worked. If you enjoyed this style of video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new around here, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching.